Hey guys, welcome back to Garrock Farms. Today we're gonna do a little bit of fencing. Our plan is to move the fence over a little bit so then we can fit eight rows instead of six rows right now. Next to this high line pole, it's really inefficient where we have it right now. So that's basically the plan for today. And I'll see you guys down there. Just got down here and our plan is to move this stretch of fence over a few feet so then we can fit eight rows here instead of six rows. We got this high line pole here and for our four row corn planter it makes it really inefficient to fit six rows in this stretch here. We got to do work on this fence anyways since it's starting to lean over a little bit so we figured we might as well move it over a few feet while we're doing upkeep on it so that's the plan for today got kind of a ledge here and then a little bit of a drop off because just working the field for 20 years like this but so we're just kind of taking this hump off and boy there's some nice soil in here this is probably some of the best soil on this farm our excavator calls that black gold anyway we're going to probably take a scoop of some of that cleaner stuff home to the garden or two but anyway we're going to kind of take that off we got to take a measurement of what four rows it takes up or eight rows i mean so we're it's just so we can squeeze through here with two passes with the planter instead of trying to straddle that light pole every time since we're redoing it anyway. Six, seven, and here's number eight. And then a little more. So we're probably talking at least 38 feet. Okay.
dad just sent me on a mission to go get two wood posts. I'll see you guys over there. I'd strap these posts down, but we ain't got too far to go. As of right now, from this post to this shovel is our widest measurement where we need to fit eight rows in between, but we put, we measured 10 rows just to play it safe. So we're gonna run a wire straight off of this to here. We'll have a post here, then we'll run it straight off of there because you can see the stream kind of interferes. So we're gonna run it straight off of this since our widest point is right here. Working it over. Mine's going in. Put yours to the hole. Mine's in the hole. Hey, okay, let it down some. the post towards me. God, my wrist hurts. Yeah, now we can mark out our post set spacings and get our other ones dug in right. I'm going one and a half. How are you? You're coming from that end now. We'll probably end up with one inch of post there. Hold them there, going like we are. Now that we got the center post in, we should be able to run a straight shot all the way down. That'll allow us to dig in these other two posts. Right now we got pretty much everything marked out the way that we want it. That will allow us to make this operation go quite a bit faster now. So what we got here is a wire goes off the top of our second post, around the bottom of our first, and then back up. We tie it together. Then we usually use a broken off P post, or you can use any piece of branch from the woods or anything, because it really, this helps stabilize everything until you get all your wires on, until your fence kind of settles in. The first few years, mostly. So in case it's some wood stick, it may not necessarily. But there we go. Now that's tight, so every, so that post can't tip. Everything's got to go up against the dirt.
professional finger pincher. Industrial finger pincher. Okay, looks about right, doesn't it? No snarly stuff, ain't it? Yeah, I think this is a Pine Railroad tie. That's kind of rare. Most of them are oak. Your pouch is looking kind of worn, sir. Yeah, I must be using it all the time. Built every building on the property with this hand. The mother-in-law gave me this for Christmas back in 1985. Were you married in 1985 already? No, nope, I wasn't married. I remember you told me, she asked you if I, if you were serious about me or not, because it was kind of expensive. Kind of a, wasn't that like out of Sears or something? And that was kind of the high end stuff then. In case it doesn't work out between us, I'll have to give it back to her. Sometimes you get something that really matters. So the brace assembly, that's what I call this between here and there. So some people will put this straight, this here piece, straight across, maybe make a little notch. I don't like to do too much of a notch because these treated posts aren't necessarily treated all the way through. And maybe up higher it doesn't matter so much, but as soon as you kind of cut through that part that ain't treated, then it starts to decay right there. But anyway, straight across. Or in an angle. I just think it looks better in an angle. And then my dad used to like put like a rock or a big stone there. Sometimes you wouldn't put this cross wire in. This is just an extra something to keep everything together. So, so there's a little notch there to hook that on. Yeah, and then you put your cross wire in where we twist our we twist it super tight. And then every wire that crosses it or touches it is stapled to it. So this, this whole thing is kind of a very tied together. See right here, I'm just going to put another one because I can. I mean, stuff like staples is so cheap. There ain't nothing worse than chasing cattle that get out because you're cheating on your fence. And if you do it right the first time, it just takes a little bit of what? A little attention here and there. Get a tree on it, you got to pull everything back up. You might have to cut it and retighten it or somehow find a splice and tighten it. But it takes only minutes. You spend all day chasing cattle around, not to mention the damage they might cause and the day that you're supposed to be doing something else, you're messing with that. Yeah, they got those little burrs on there so they don't back out so easy. Really annoying. I like that. Then you got to get the short ones for the oak railroad ties. Put these on a the oak railroad tie, they'll bend over halfway in. All that stuff. I was wondering because my dad's farm, we all had them short ones all the time. Well, that's why, because he had them oak posts, homemade from the woods. Split. Some of them look pretty good. I remember making those and we would stack them up. Seven feet long, or say eight, eight feet long. Now crisscross them, right? Get maybe about 10, 12 layers high, and then we pour waste oil over the top after they start drying out. Out in the sun someplace. Maybe put some steel over the top so they didn't get weathered too bad. And then they would get really hard. That's a long time. Then we would. 
Now you can find a tree that like white oak. You split it like in four with wedges, shove wedges through it. Sometimes you have a chainsaw to kind of get it to split right. I did that quite a bit. That's how we started here. I had a lot of posts already kind of you could say processed. We didn't have to buy all them posts on borrowed money. We are using there right out of the woods. And there's a, still a few of those. What are we, almost 30 years into this fencing? And I still have a few of them that are still holding up. And then we got a whole load of railroad ties when they were more available. Oh, and that's a wrap.